This will be our 10th message in this subject of assurance. The difference between spurious and real assurance. <clears throat> Now, Satan has managed to emulate a lot of things associated with life in Christ. To the unlearned, they look real, but they're not. They're not effective in the kingdom of God. There's such a thing as a false faith. It yaps. It's all it does, it just yaps, like a barking dog. Yeah. Can't accomplish the things of God. The false faith, not real. There's such a thing as fleshly joy. It's not really the joy of the Lord. It's just a kind of a carnal happiness, what it is. The scriptures tell us in 2 Corinthians 11:4, there's such a thing as another Jesus. That Jesus is not real. Oh, he spells his name with a capital J. And he's a, set forth as being a great blessing. But the people who embrace him aren't changed. They don't have a new heart. They don't have a new affection. They're drawn aside to the world easily. What is the trouble? It's not the real Jesus. Amen. And the same text, 2 Corinthians 11, 4, says there's another gospel. It's not the real gospel. It's just a gospel. It's not the power of God unto salvation. People can preach it till they're blue in the face. And God won't work through it. Because it's not real. It's not true. And that same text says there's another spirit. You know, people call it the Holy Spirit. They set forth what this Spirit does. But it's not the real Spirit. How do you know? Because it doesn't do what the Spirit does. The Holy Spirit changes people from glory to glory. They progress in their likeness to Christ. But another Spirit, He doesn't do this. Babylon the Great mentioned in the Revelation. Well, there's a lot of nonsense taught about Babylon the Great. All you have to do is just turn on the TV and you know that there's people that suffer from the malady of cranial cavity. It means there's nothing up there. Babylon the Great is a whore. Yeah, that's right. And the world is never called a whore. Yeah. Babylon the Great has committed fornication with the world. And Muslims and Shintoists and all the other fake religions, they've never committed fornication because they've never been married to Jesus. So Babylon the Great is a fabrication. It's Satan's artificial church. Amen. <laughs> it's worldwide. It's all over the place. I don't care what country you go to. It's there. There it is. Now, all of these things produce a false assurance. There's people that think because they have this denominational name or that denominational name or they embrace this particular doctrine or that particular doctrine that God's with them. And these false doctrines make people fundamentally dishonest. Actually, they're no different than anybody else and they kind of know it. It's a false assurance. You don't want to wait till you fall apart to find out you have this. Yeah. Amen. You want to have real assurance that when the crisis comes, you got it. Amen. That's too late to get it then. You don't, you don't get it, you know. A, a trial is not the time to get faith. <laughs> time to use faith. Amen. Spurious. Babylon has an elaborate network of doctrines and experiences that do not 
have the life of God in them. And you go down to the Christian bookstore, I'm beginning to wonder if there is indeed such a thing as a Christian bookstore. But you go down to a Christian bookstore and you got all kind of people got answers. Go to the problem solving section, that's the biggest section of the bookstore. They know how to make a happy marriage. They know how to win souls. They know how to do this and how to do that. But the trouble is the systems don't work. And if you've ever tried them, you know they don't work. So it shouldn't surprise us as assurance or confidence had been duplicated by the devil in an attempt to duplicate it. It's, it's spurious, it's false, it's not real. God doesn't give it and there's no way it can do what God intends for assurance to do. Assurance is a thing that keeps you standing in the storm. Amen. Yeah. Assurance is a thing that keeps you bobbing a day and a night in the deep. <laughs> and assurance is what keeps you calm when a boat's breaking apart and you're about to be a, you're shipwrecked. Yeah. And you say, don't leave the boat. Yeah. Let's wait till we get within swimming distance. Yeah. And if you can't swim, grab a boat, grab a board and go out. You see, a real assurance can be calm and can say to the people scared of you, oh, you haven't eaten for a couple of weeks, so I suggest you eat, eat up now because we're going to need to have all the strength we have. He's just calm. In fact, Jesus told him, I'm giving you charge of the ship. Amen. Told the ship master, get stepped to the side. I got another one taken over now. Yes. You do all right when the seas are calm. I can see you can navigate this boat when the sea is calm. But now there's a storm coming up. It's been lasting for a couple of weeks. We haven't seen the stars for two weeks. And, and someone else has got to take over here that has assurance. Because I aim to get all the people on land safe and sound. What was it, 379 souls? Safe. Watch, somebody had real assurance. Now there's things the scripture talks about that are false. They sound right, but they're false. They're not real. The law said, Exodus 23, 1, Thou shalt not raise a false report. Don't you say something happened that really didn't. Now listen, brethren, I've been in a lot of testimonial meetings that there's a whole bunch of false reports. <laughs> I can tell folk made this up on the fly. The Lord did this, the Lord did that. Never report anything the Lord did if the Lord didn't do it. False reports. And there's such a thing as a false witness. Romans 13, 9 reminds us the law said that don't bear false witness. Don't give a witness that's not true. That's why the law said you got to have two witnesses. They got to agree, at least two of them. You got to have at least two, and they have to agree. Remember when Jesus had false witnesses? They couldn't get any two of them to agree. <laughs> no, two of them agreed. They were false witnesses. And the scripture speaking, 2 Corinthians 11 13, about false apostles. They say they're apostles. But they don't show us the signs of an apostle. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I can tell from their message they don't really know what God's a doing. Uh -huh. False apostles. Yeah, I'm showing you here that we've got to deal with things that are spurious. This is like an everyday thing. We gotta we gotta deal with this. You can't pass laws about this. You gotta be discerning. You have to be able to discern as Hebrews. 12 says, discern, 5 says, discern both good and evil. You have to be able to tell that street, that's, that's evil. Yeah. Or that's, that's good. That's right, that's wrong, that's truth, that's a lie. I'm not talking about you got to have some people among you that can do this. All God's people have to get to the point where they can tell what's real and what's not. Amen. And everything you need to do that now has been supplied in Christ Jesus. You got new life, new spirit, new covenant. It's all there. So you can you have the resources to be able to do this. 
And Paul said in 2 Corinthians 11, 26, that he was in peril among false brethren. <laughs> now, I know none of you have ever encountered that, have you? False brethren. You divulged yourself to them. You told yourself. Then you find, whoa, this is not a real brother at all. False brethren, they're out there. They're a source of suffering. Now, listen. It hurts to have to deal with false brethren. You can get over it, but it hurts. False brethren. John said, many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is right early. This is early in the history of the church. You can imagine what a flood of them is going out now. Many false prophets. So test the Try the spirits to see whether they are of God. That's your business. I don't know how to do it. Well, before the night's over, learn how to do it. You've got to be able to test the spirits because there's lying prophets out there. And there's cunning. Let's not forget that the human race fell after the first encounter with the devil. There's only been two morally perfect people in the history of the world except for Jesus. And he didn't come from Adam. <laughs> He's not in Adam's lineage. God's his father. And you take him out of the pictures, there's only two people in the entire history of humanity that were morally perfect and they flunked the first, not the tenth, the first test they flunked. And the whole human race was flushed down. And sin entered the world and death by sin and everybody sinned and everybody dies. That was a result of one discussion with the devil. <laughs> so if you think you could talk to the devil, you'll lose. You resist the devil. It doesn't say rebuke the devil. That's not what it says. Yeah, okay. Resist mm -hmm. the devil. Amen. He can't. Satan doesn't have anything in his arsenal that can offset no. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Huh? Uh -huh. This is what newness of life does for you. He says, no. Uh -huh. Now, Satan hurls these temptations at Jesus. They were. They were unique temptations. They weren't temptations like you have. Like, as we've mentioned, none of you have been tempted lately to turn a stone into bread, have you? No. Huh? Have you? That's what it took to tempt Jesus. You couldn't tempt him with a woman or riches. Or... Yeah. Turn a stone into bread. And he just said, no. Yeah. Yeah, what... Satan had nothing that could offset that. You deny ungodliness. The grace of God teaches us to deny ungodliness. That means just deny ungodliness. Doesn't mean say it's not real. It means reject it. Just say no. Amen. Yeah. Say no. The next temptation that you have, try it. No. Then the Holy Spirit will come in. Yeah, <laughs> He'll strengthen your no. Mm -hmm. Say that's Satan. That depart. Send them away. No. <coughs> and the scriptures talk about there's lying signs and wonders. It says the man of sin will come in with lying signs and wonders. That doesn't mean they're not signs and wonders. They really are signs and wonders, but they're, they deliver the wrong message. They're lying signs and wonders. See? Yeah, I come from a background where people say Satan can't do anything miraculous. Come on. What did those, uh, that fire come down out of heaven and burned up Job's sheep? <laughs> Was that like uh, not real? Did those sheep really not burn up? Weren't those real boils he had on him? Yeah. Satan did that. It was a lion sign. It suggested God wasn't with him. But there was a lion sign. God was with him. Amen. And we know who he was because he recovered from this. Amen. Got twice as much as he had before. That proves Satan, see? He's, he's a liar. Amen. <laughs> and there are those who say, I love God. Uh, that's me. I love God so much. 
Well, to be sure, we're, we hope that is the truth. But 1 John 4.20 says, If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he's a liar. Amen. He that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? See, that's a, I'm showing that there are false things all around you. You say, well, who is my brother? Actually, it's Jesus' brother. <laughs> He's the firstborn among many brethren. So whoever doesn't love the people that are associated with Jesus, and that person says they love God, that's a false brother there. He's not real at all, or she. He's not real at all. So it should not surprise us that there is such a thing, is such a thing as spurious assurance. I want to give some examples of spurious assurance where the people thought what they were doing was acceptable. They thought they could do it. And early on in human history, the first two offspring, Cain and Abel, in the process of time, as they grew up to a young adulthood, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstling of his flocks and the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel. And he, unto Abel. he had respect unto Abel yeah, amen. and to his offering. But unto Cain and his offering, he had not respect. So God doesn't receive an offering from a person he doesn't receive. <laughs> Boy, that would revolutionize fundraising, wouldn't it? All the share we hear about, they ought to have a line down there. Look, don't anybody give that's not received by God. Boy, that'd cut it down, wouldn't it? But that's how God views it. Under Cain and his offering, he had not respect, even though Cain thought he would. That's why Cain offered it. Cain offered it because he thought it'd be accepted. See, uh -huh. spurious. Yeah, right. Because Cain was really a child of the wicked one. Amen. That's what the apostles tell us. He was a child. He was a devil's child. Yeah. Even though when he was born, Eve said, I've gotten me a man from the Lord. I thought this is the seed. This is, this is it. We got the answer already, Adam. <laughs> God, of course, they did. this wasn't told him. This was a the head of the uh, seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent. That wasn't even told to Adam and Eve. That was told to Satan. They overheard it. So the gospel was preached to the whole human race. This is who Satan and the whole human race is present. And they overheard it, and Eve thought, this is the answer. We're going to get out of this dilemma right away. <laughs> well, it wasn't until 4,000 years later. Cain wasn't it at all. He thought he was. I think another one. Let's take the human race that's traveling across the globe and they stop at the plain of Shinar. And they say, let's, make a, let's build a city and a tower that reaches up into heaven. Let's make a name for ourselves. How they thought they could do it. In fact, God said they could do it. Nothing should be restrained from this people that they imagine to do because the people is one. What are you going to do about that? God, I'm going to stop the project. Yeah. He came down. How are you going to stop a project like that? Knock, knock whatever was built up down? No. He made it so the people couldn't talk to one another. Yeah. And the building stopped. Yeah. Now you really got to be able to see this. What do we got in the Christian world? Amen. What do we have? Yeah. Uh -huh. We got people don't understand each other. Huh? So this sect says that, and that denomination says that, and they argue about this, and they argue about that, and so what, what's happened? The building has stopped. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you my own personal opinion of it. I think God's done this. Amen. I think because the the church, the professed church, got skewed off in the wrong direction. Yeah. It got institutionalized and organized and clergyized and psychologized and 
So God said, that's it. I'm going to make it so the people don't understand each other. And there have been people trying to unite the church for centuries and haven't been able to do it because God has scattered it. There's a remnant now among all these people. Understand there's a remnant. False assurance. The Israelites were warned about being deceived and developing a spurious assurance about it. Deuteronomy 19, this is in these words, 18 and 19. Lest there, be, lest there should be among you a man or a woman or family or tribe whose heart turneth away this day from the Lord our God and go and serve the gods of these nations, lest there be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood. And it come to pass when he heareth the words of this curse that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace. Though I walk in the imagination of mine heart to add drunkenness to thirst. That's a furious assurance. They heard this message, they said, that's, I like that, I like that message. I got these itching ears and I, oh, I like that, what they say. It's such a positive, such a positive message. I like that power of positive thinking. Oh, I like that. They begin to think, I'm going to have peace. Yeah. That's spurious assurance. You know it is because when the hammer comes down and the Babylonian captivity comes and the people are hauled off to Babylon and the king's killed, Hey, they didn't have any assurance then. The 137th Psalm said there by the rivers of Babylon, we sat down, we wept, and we remembered Zion. For they that carried us away required of us a song, saying, sing us one of the Lord's songs. They said, how can we sing the Lord's songs in a strange land? See, they could have avoided that if they would have had real assurance. Amen. Let's take this matter a little further. <clears throat> Brother Judah read this passage already, the occasion of Ai. Now Israel had just mopped up Jericho. Boy, they, they, uh, the walls fell down with a shout. Well, that, that, that couldn't happen in our day. You know, there's not much shouting in the church. Yeah. Walls came down with a shout. Not a whisper, not a whisper, a shout. Yeah. Yeah. That's true, God talks in a still small voice. That's true, but he expects you to shout it out. Yeah. He said, what you heard no more? Quiet, shout out from the housetops. Walls had just fallen down. They went every man straight ahead. Devastated the whole city. Just captured the whole thing. They, all right, this has just happened. There's this little, vid, little village down the road. City of Ai. And he said, let's go down there and uh, oh, we are going to need a lot of men for this. We'll just take a handful of men because... <laughs> I mean, God's with us, brethren, God's with us. Uh, they didn't know about this man among them, Aiken. <laughs> he said, "Woo, boy, look at that new suit of clothes. I'd look really good in that suit. Got him some gold, got him a nice suit, raiment. Saw some gold, wedge of gold. I'll be able to do the Lord's work at this gold. Huh? Several pieces of silver. They didn't know that it happened, but it had. So uh, Joshua said to the people, the people returned, said to Joshua, let not all the people go up. Let's don't take the whole army up there, just like we did take in Jericho. That'd take two or 3,000 men go up. The army, see, was 601,000. <laughs> so this is kind of cutting down the army. <laughs> Yeah. Two or three thousand, that, that'll do it, that'll do it. Two or three thousand, go up and we'll smite AI and make not all the people labor together. Let's not, let's not be a burden to all the people. Let's not all, let's not all fight here. Come on now, just a few of us can handle this. And the men of AI smote them. About thirty and six men. For they chased them from before the gate, even under Sherebim. 
and smote them in the going down. Therefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. Whoa, what, what happened? Somebody among them had taken the power. He's just one. He's just one. One person took the power. But the Israelites thought they still had the power. And it took a big overthrow to show them something's wrong here. He said, I maintain we're in a day when the church, when it's defeated, they don't have enough sense to see something's wrong here. Prayers are unanswered. Real power is not there. They just talk it, you know. I've told you there's 160 churches in Joplin and these combined churches couldn't shut down one porn shop. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? No power. Mm-hmm. That's right. All the people that command nature, mm-hmm. the people like this, I just commanded the I just commanded the storm. None of them stepped out in front of this tornado. Yeah, did they? Uh-uh. I think this has been an ideal been an ideal circumstance for these people that are puffing smoke about how much they can do to have hauled in and stood out in front of that tornado and rebuked it and made it turn aside. Nobody did that though. Why didn't they? Well some people have enough sense to know if you don't have the power you don't try stuff that requires the power. See? It was a false power. Here's another instance, the book of Judges, Samson. Now Samson had a history of success. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, he caught 300 foxes. That's quite a task right there. You ever try and catch one? 300 foxes tied their tails together. That's task number two. Yeah. Put a firebrand in it and lit it. Let them loose and burn down the fields of the Philistines. The other time he slew a thousand with the jawbone of an ass. So he had some exploits behind him. Yeah. You remember the case of uh, Delilah? She said, oh, what's the secret of your strength? I says, I can't tell you. Can't tell you. I love you a lot, honey, but <laughs> I can't. I can't divulge this. Oh, come on, come on. Said she just heckled them day after day. Yeah. Broke them down, nagging them about it. Said, if you love me, you'd tell me. And just to finally, he told her. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes, my hair. If you cut my hair, my strength's gone. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what happened. Yeah. She gave the signal to the Philistines. We got him now. Mm-hmm. Come on in. He was asleep. She said to him, like she said all the other times, the three other times they'd come in, and he just got up and snapped the bonds he had and went out and de- defeated them. She said, the Philistines be upon thee. He woke out of his sleep and said, now oh, here's spurious assurance. He woke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistines took him, put out his eyes, and brought him down to Gaza, and bound him with fetters of brass, and he did grind in the prison house. False assurance. He didn't know. Do you you suppose that there are some people who wear the name of Jesus who've lost their strength and they don't know it? Yet the Lord isn't with them anymore because they didn't abide in him. They weren't bearing fruit. They don't know it and they attempt things that can't be done unless God's with you. I want to take another instance now. This is King Sennacherib, a Syrian king. He'd been sweeping across the country, defeating everybody. Boy, he'd had a resounding success. And the nations he defeated were bigger than Israel was. So he decided to write a letter to Israel. And here's what he told them in a letter to tell Hezekiah the king. Tell him, let not thy God in whom thou trustest deceive thee. 
saying, Jerusalem shall not be delivered unto the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, thou hast heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all lands by destroying them utterly, and shalt thou be delivered? Come on now, Hezekiah. You, you, you know you know that you will I'll defeat you. Behold, have the gods of the nations delivered them which thy fathers which my fathers have destroyed, as Gozan and Haran and Rephzim and the children of Eden, which were in Thelasar? Where is the king of Hamath and the king of Arphad and the king of the city of Zeraphim, Hena or Iva? So he had a lot of assurance, he had this string, unparalleled string of victories, but Hezekiah took that letter. He spread it out. He couldn't personally do anything. He spread it out before the Lord said, you're the one he's reproached, Lord. The Lord said, listen, up in the heavenly chamber, listen, we'd like to have an angel, a volunteer here. Just one, one will be enough. Just go down there, and while they're asleep, slaughter the whole army, 185,000. Yeah. yeah, where was Sennacherib's assurance then? He fled, went back home, and his own sons killed him in the house of his God. Yeah, that's right. He had spurious yeah. assurance. Yeah. Then there's Asa, King Asa. Hananiah the seer came up to him came to Asa the king of Judah and said unto him because thou hast relied thou hast relied on the king of, of Syria and hast not relied on the Lord thy God therefore is the host of the king of Assyria escaped out of thy hand well let's just update it let's update it a little bit into our age you relied on the church growth program you relied on the 40 days of purpose. Huh? You relied on the celebrate recovery. Huh? You relied on the Bible colleges. And you relied on the seminaries. See? What's right up to date, brother? This is right up to date. And whenever you rely on anybody but God, you relied on the doctor. You just well take, take it all away. <laughs> as soon as you do that, God backs away. And you're on your own. He's going to show you. I may use all these people. But you're not to rely on them. Amen. You're to rely on me. Amen. Spurious. Assurance. How about this word from Job? He said the deceived and the deceiver are his. The deceived... And the deceiver are his. Deceivers can't make a move unless God says, okay. In fact, God says he's going to send strong delusion. People don't believe a lot. People don't believe that or love the truth because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. God's going to send them strong delusion and they will believe a lie that God can damn. All those that love not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Hmm? Spurious assurance. How about the confidence of the wicked? They, they sometimes have a spurious assurance. Psalm 10, 6 says of the wicked, He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved. I mean, my name's Donald Trump. I have billions of dollars. Who's going to move me? I shall not be moved. For I shall never be in adversity. Spurious assurance. How about this spurious assurance? Psalm 27. Some trust in chariots. We are the strongest military in the world. Oh, yeah, I, I fear and tremble every time I hear these politicians say this. We're the strongest nation. We've got the strongest military presence. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord. They, that's the one trust in horses and chariots, are brought down and fallen, but we, trust in the Lord, are risen and stand upright. 
So we may look like a valley of dry bones now. <laughs> but when this thing is over, we're going to stand up yeah. in an exceeding great army. The assurance makes you see. We know that the church is in bad shape. Everybody that's honest knows that the professed church is in bad shape. We're not about to throw in the towel. Amen. We're not about to say, I quit. We've got assurance. We know how this thing's going to end up. And it may be very shortly. How about this false or spurious assurance? Psalm 33, 16. There's no king saved by the multitude of a host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. A horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Okay, you can throw bombs and satellite bombs and missiles. and You can throw all that in there. See, I don't see a lot of assurance in the modern church. I see them joining in the political, trying to correct things with political votes and things like this. This is not the answer. In the first place, we got to form a government that's not even in the Bible. Just in case you wondered. The only kind of governments in the Bible is a dictatorship. Why? Because that's the kind of government God operates. <laughs> He's the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, and He does what He wants. And if you don't like it, you can lump it. That's the way it is. But some trust in that as uh, false assurance. You can have a personal attitude that sounds strong and it sounds good if you're a psychiatrist. You can say like Psalm 40, verse, 44, verse 6. Well, this is a positive statement of the case. This is, I will not trust in my bow. Neither shall my sword save me. So I may be pretty adept at polemics and arguing and this sort of thing. And I may be able to stand toe to toe with anybody and really debate this thing out. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to trust in that. That's a false assurance. What about wealth? Psalm 49:6 says, "They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of riches, they trust in their wealth." Psalm 52, 6. This is the man that made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches. Here's what Paul said to rich Christian people. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches. Amen. There it is. See, there it is. I've showed you in these uh, few texts that there is such a thing as a spurious assurance. Here's one. Jesus had been up on the Mount of Transfiguration. Just to show you that every disciple doesn't have the same privilege, he only took three of the twelve up there with him. Peter, James, and John. Those are the same three he took with him a little further in the garden. Those are the same three he took with him into the house of Jairus, raised his daughter. They saw him transfigured. His face was glistered and white, the skin of his face. It was the inner glory coming out. See, for man to get glory, it's got to come down on him. But Jesus' glory was in him, and it kind of burst out. After the events, they're coming back down the mountain. Wouldn't you know it, down to the foot of the mountain, they got a crisis. But a man there that has a Demon-possessed son. Pitiful, pitiful condition. This demon would throw the son in fire, make him jump in the fire, jump in the water. Even while Jesus was talking to the man, the, the boy falls down, wallowing on the ground and foaming at the mouth. Jesus looks at the boy, wallowing and foaming at the mouth. He says, uh, how long has he been like this? <laughs> Now, you, only someone in charge of the situation can, can talk like that. Everybody else would be, be a big, be, their nerves would be frazzled. He said, how long? Uh... Well, he said, since he's been a boy. 
He said, oh, he said to Jesus, if you can do anything, if, if, you, if, if, if you can do anything, oh, Lord, help us. Jesus answered, if I can do anything, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Well, you know the account. He, he healed the boy. The disciples noted all this. Now, scriptures tell us the man first brought the, brought the boy to the nine disciples that were left. Now, they had a, a lot of success casting out demons. In Matthew, the 10th chapter, Jesus sent them out. And they cast out demons. Demons were subject to them. So I could just imagine, this is just another one of those cases. Don't worry about it. Jesus isn't here, but don't worry. I mean, we've cast out demons before. It hadn't been that long ago, so we'll handle this case. But they couldn't cast them out. Yeah. They had a spurious assurance. Yeah. So when they got, got a little way down the road, they said, Why couldn't we? Why couldn't we cast them out? Oh, he said, because of your unbelief. Yeah. You were dealing with a different kind of case here. Yeah. Yeah. This kind of demon doesn't come out except by prayer and fasting. You, you, you can't use a standard approach to this. See, false assurance sometimes makes you think that every circumstance is the same and because you had success then, you'll have success now. But that's not, uh, that's not the case. Then, of course, there was this vain assurance of the prophets of Baal. You remember them? They just knew Baal was going to answer them. They built an altar, altar slaughtered an animal, laid him up on there, and they got up on that altar, man. They began to pray, and you know, nothing happened. They began jumping up and down. They cut themselves with knives. You know, and Elijah mocked him. He says, Maybe your God's away in a trip someplace. <laughs> Listen, brother, you can agitate the ungodly. Say, Hey, you've been trusting in all this and that. Why isn't it working for you now, huh? That's what he did. These prophets had false, spurious assurance. On our day, there's a lot of confidence that rests in, like, creeds. If you believe the right set of things, yeah, like, that's the secret. Just so you know, we got this, uh, got this manual here. It's a little, little bitty manual, too, but it tells you what we stand for. <laughs> Yeah, it is here. If you just can do this, uh, you'll be approved. Man, at the time when I was uh, working at the Full Gospel Businessmen's Group, man came to me and he said, uh, do you belong to a Full Gospel Church? And I said, well, I'll, I'll be right up front with you. The church that I've been associated with is a half gospel church. <laughs> But I said, you are too. You're not preaching the whole gospel. Because you got just as many sick people as we do. Huh? I go down to the hospital down here. I say, is anyone here from the Assembly of God? Well, yeah, they, well, yeah we've got a lot of people, a lot of people here. I say, yeah. Yeah, we do too. So don't be telling me about how you got the power if you got the same circumstances we got. That's a false assurance. But see, they offer the people. I don't blame the people that are caught in this. They've been led to believe this. They've been led to believe they got power. But when they're at home by themselves, they really know they don't have it. And I can tell you, if you got the power, you really have it. The only reason you have it is because God gave it to you. God gave it to you because you were abiding in his son. You thought highly of his son. You were willing to cut loose from anything and everything. Amen. Kept you from God. Amen. And then you only got power to do what God wants done. Amen. So God might not want. Yeah. Might not want this case. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Resolved. Mm -hmm. Remember when Jesus was here? Often it said he would heal the multitudes. He'd just heal a whole bunch of people at one time. Mm -hmm. So a couple, three times it said he healed them all. 
Jesus hadn't gone back to heaven. He wasn't gone very long until a whole bunch of sick folk are brought into Jerusalem. And Peter, remember his shadow fell on him? Remember? So Jesus didn't heal all the sick people, did he? He come to the pool of Bethesda, and the scripture says the porch was, they had five porches, and they were filled up with impotent folk. He stepped over all of them and went to one person. Now here's what I'm telling you. If you have the kind of assurance you can have in Christ, you'll be able to find that one person. You may wish you could have found five or... But there are some generations, there are just a very few people that God will let, let see this because it's a degenerate generation. But you can find them if you have this full assurance of faith. See, the full assurance motivates you to have a hope to the end. You're not looking at the circumstance, you're looking at the end. When everything's over and you stand at the right hand of the Lord Jesus Amen. and you hear these words no matter what men thought of you no matter what men Amen. thought of you he'll say well done yeah. well God. done good and faithful servant Amen. he'll say to Paul you got beat a lot of times and it looked like you were a loser to a lot of people huh mm -hmm. you did good Paul yeah. you left an example mm -hmm. for my people to see Amen. my people can see if you just hold on to Christ the important thing isn't to overcome what you're facing now. The important thing is to be on the winning end when it all ends. Amen. And assurance is designed. It's a full assurance of hope mm -hmm. unto the end. So only those uh, living by faith and walking in the Spirit can properly assess assurance and confidence good to search your heart probably in the prayer chamber see if you have some evidences of assurance things like you just you just know <laughs> now I know how to swim I'm not a champion swimmer but I know how to swim so if I uh, fell in the in a spring river someplace where it was really deep here I wouldn't have to say, let's, would I? I haven't swam in so long, I wonder if I, if I still can swim. See, I know I know how to swim. That's the way assurance is. Amen. There'll come a trial and you won't have time to assess, do I? Amen. I wonder if I'm able to stand or not. You won't have time to do that. that you got to find that out before the uh -huh. trouble. When you have the full assurance of faith, you'll be able to grit your teeth and say, I'm going to stay it. I want to get next to the shelter, to a shadow of a mighty rock in a weary land. Now I'm going to hold on Amen. till the storm is past. Amen. Amen. That's the real assurance. All of God's people can have it. We're not trying to find out who doesn't have it. I, I, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad Jesus didn't say give a great commission and say, now go find out everybody who doesn't have assurance and report back to me. That, uh, that's not what we're doing. We want to know if we have assurance. Amen. So examine yourself, and if you find yourself less and less fearful when you come before Christ, more and more bold to let your requests be made known. He, doesn't say, he didn't say he'd answer it. He says if it's according to his will and if you have faith. You know, but those are, two, those are two things you can't take for granted. But he does guarantee this. In, in everything, be careful for nothing. Don't let care or worry or fret dominate you. No matter what the situation is, don't let it. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication. Supplication means you just press it and you plead it strongly. Let your request be made known unto God. He doesn't say he'll answer, but he does say this. The peace of God will keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Amen. What is that? That's assurance. Yeah. And if you have assurance, believe me, brethren, you can pass through anything. Amen. And if you don't have assurance, you can't pass through 
anything. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. Brother Aaron has our word of exhortation.